Okay, so I'll start this off with a little, telling you guys a little bit about myself. My name is Kurt Roswell and I'm the director at Esports Championship. I'm an entrepreneur and I like playing games. And um, now I spend all my time doing business and just a little bit of time playing games. Um, firstly, I'd like to go through the design intention for the Street Fighter competitions and I'll explain why we took this all so wild. We want to design a system that is a ruthless, money where your mouth is type of competition with high pressure gameplay. The full intention is to be different from anyone else by adding elements to the format that add more chokes, more clutches, and more storyline. A true spectator sport. Along with this, our goal is to support $325 in prize pool for 40 out of 52 weeks of every year and any extra funding, sponsorship, and donations will be funneled right back into the season final prize pool. This ensures that we stay afloat and we don't disappear like the last couple of hundred grassroots TOs in the last five years. The figure's probably around that, but I've lost count and so have you. And that allows us to continue to deliver financially for the players, plus all the people whose countless hours of hard work go behind the scenes to these events. To clear things up, we are not an esports org. We're an event promotion company that chose to do esports. Everyone on our team is an avid gamer, and that's where our passion comes from. The priorities are to ensure that the top performing players get rewarded and attract new eyes to esports in the Oceania region with elevated pressure and a more easily digested format. Esports without the spectator is just an E. The way we intend to boost the economy and engagement with esports in Oceania is to attract people who don't already watch esports. Making the play-by-play -play easier to digest, build stories around the players through blogs and interviews, and tell their stories and showcase their personality. And with all that being said, let's move on to the Q&A. So, Midnight Oz, Discord. Given the community response to the tournament format and the general consensus towards the game favoring a format of first to three games, given the typically volatile and fast-paced nature of the game across all levels, would this be a format that you would consider uh, going forward with? Or would you still rather stick to the first of one format? Okay. So we do agree that it may be too much of a roll of the dice for some players to accept the risk given the entry fee. However, I will quickly mention that these tournaments are online and do not require players to travel. So additional costs associated with this, such as flights, accommodation, fuel, team shirts, etc., apply. But we will be changing the early match format to best of three with best of five for the final match and three rounds per battle with a 99 second timer and that should appease most okay so question two is from shen kang i think people just like to call him shen um his post was, i've broken his one up because it was quite a detailed um large format post so I've just broken it down into a few different questions here. Uh, entry fee. This is the mostly, this is mostly unprecedented for online fighting game tournaments. It'll likely be a hard sell as it's a significant amount of money for players that aren't confident they can win. Having a fee that goes towards prizing makes sense, but it's vague where that money is going. Now the short answer to this is that all the money is going back into the prize pool. The only thing that is removed from the prize pool is the cost of the championship trophy. Competition format. It's nice to see a different format, but the provided rule set won't cater to the players. This also ties into the entry fee. Charging an entry fee to see half the players immediately exit the tournament after one match gives very little incentive to return to this event. And that's correct. It's intended to be high stakes. Though, I don't know if anyone would call $25 high stakes when an in-game outfit costs about the same in fighter coins. But anyways, it's meant to put the players in a tense position. The best matches are the ones that come out when the pressure is high. I would suggest picking either single elimination with a longer match format or double elimination with a shorter match format. Going for a single elimination and a short format will be unappealing for the players and spectators. Yeah, we're in agreement on that. Uh, and as addressed, we will do a longer match format for Street Fighter VI. However, the qualifiers will remain as single elimination, as we need to ensure that our matches can all be broadcasted, can run closely to a schedule with minimal delays, and most importantly, are exciting for the viewers to watch. 
Also, streaming every match will be unfeasible. For players that progress, this will cause very long downtimes between matches, and in my experience, this always leads to backlash. Yeah, correct. And But this has been accounted for. Uh, the tournaments will start at midday to avoid going into the late night. Uh, competitors have the option to practice, to keep themselves sharp, relax, watch other matches, whatever they want to do because they're in the safety of their own home. Regardless, the nature of a tournament is a testament to one's endurance. You may be shit hot in the first couple hours, but how do you match up in the fifth hour or the sixth hour? And how does your opponent match up in the same environment? All things considered, if you win a season final in this competition, you've accomplished an incredible achievement. Limited entry. Along with that I shared above, this will limit accessibility. Purely a suggestion, I would consider opting for reducing the entry fee and at least doubling the player cap. So yeah, this wouldn't be feasible to broadcast. The objective is to keep everyone on stream. Every player deserves to be in the spotlight. And it ain't sport unless someone's watching. Okay, terms and conditions. The TNCs that have been listed are vague and in some instances very restrictive. Players being unable to stream their own matches will deny ESC extra publicity. This rule was put in as a global rule to eliminate stream sniping. And that only applies to COD tournaments which have a stream delay. Since then we've adjusted the rules to allow players to stream. However, that we only recommend stream streaming if your internet can easily handle it and make sure you run a stream delay to avoid being stream sniped. Okay, requiring entrance to pay the entry fee directly through your website is unusual and it should be made clearer on the sign up page that Stripe is being used, perhaps with the use of a secure portal. Stripe is one of, if not the biggest online credit card processor in the world. Most major brands and local businesses around the world use Stripe to process their customers' online credit card payments. Hell, even StartGG used Stripe and for their entry fees. It is a highly secure and safe for customers to use. We have added a badge to clearly show that we use Stripe for our credit card processing on the website. There is very little information about what happens after paying for entry, e.g. Where do players find tournament bracket and other entrants? Okay, yeah, good question. Uh, in the respective tournament page, there is a tab called Player Information. This has been added to clarify the matter. The information is also on the FAQ. Regarding the bracket, it'll be generated a few days after entries close for each tournament. You can find the bracket on the specific tournament page and we'll also post an update on our social media channels when the bracket is available. Please note that we do not disclose who has entered the tournament until the draw is released. However, you can see the number of remaining spots available while the entries are open. And lastly, a liability waiver is contentious for legal reasons. Now, I'm not sure if this was a typo or not, but simply put, we're not liable for what happens when you're competing in your own home. We don't feel like there's anything contentious about it. Like, there's no debate to be had if anything happens for whatever reason while you're in your own home. And that's all about that. Okay, Meplop. Uh, this was uh, from Discord. Uh, are there rules for bad connections? Uh, I took this question as sort of addressing our harsh disconnection policies because they were pretty strict. Like we run on a tight schedule, so we have pretty strict rules on these DCs, but we have listened to the community and we've adjusted our disconnections quality to be more lenient. And the information for this can be found on the tournament page for the respective tournament. Okay, now Wanda, this was submitted through Discord. ABN should be on the footer of your website if it isn't already. This was standard practice quite some time ago, but nowadays it's very rare to use an ABN on a website that is B2C or business to consumer. This is really only a thing for companies that primarily provide services to other businesses. Also, another handy tip is to include last names on your meet the team section. It will make it easier for people to trust you. If you want to find out exactly who we are, they, they can do that already through connecting the dots between social media accounts. But as it stands, we have, a deta we have detailed our financials and everything in between for our plans regarding the events and the whys. We have demonstrated a great deal of transparency throughout this last week and there is absolutely no reason why anyone needs to know the specific personal details of the people who work for this company. They're just trying to do their job and I will not leave them open to anything untoward. 
Also, the rule set needs a lot of work before you can reasonably expect people to understand and adhere to it. Like I get an informal tone works great for socials, etc. but a rule set needs to be unambiguous and free of catchy wording. Treat it as a legal document. Our original approach with the rule set was to not use so much legal wording to make it more easily interpreted by a wider audience. But through multiple points of feedback about this, this document has been changed to have clearer legal wording to repel any ambiguity. All right, well, I think that sort of wraps it up. There weren't really many questions, mainly statements and suggestions, but the goal of this was to address most of the concerns of the FGC. And I think that goal has been accomplished along with the documents that have been released over the last couple of days. Furthermore, we would like to thank anyone who has given their feedback and suggestions. Though, if you have any more questions or suggestions, you know we're listening. Master the game, claim the fame.